Greetings all, Ferrari Man 601 here. Welcome back to iRacing and welcome back to another one of these track learning videos. I know that it's probably a little bit unbelievable to some of you. However, I don't know Long Beach. And with the IndyCar season for 2021 wrapping up this weekend, I thought that it might be appropriate at the behest of a longtime friend of the channel to take a look at Long Beach and uh, to go through the trials and tribulations of learning this place. I have never turned a lap here before in any sim, ever, unless you want to count the Sega Master System, System game, World Grand Prix Circuit. Yep, that's what it was called, World Grand Prix Circuit. I think that one was put out in 1986, something like that, for the Sega Master System. I played it, not in period, because I didn't exist yet, but I had an original Master System with that game back in the days when games were physical objects, cartridges actually, that you put into a machine after blowing the hell out of them to get the dust out of there. And yeah, Long Beach was one of the circuits on that. Of course, it wasn't called Long Beach because that would have been a licensing snafu even back in the day. But that's the only experience I have of Long Beach. So we're going to put that right. We've got the IR18, which of course is the IndyCar. And we're going to try and find our way around this place. I have seen many a race around Long Beach uh, in the IndyCar series. And uh, Formula One also used to come here way back in the day when Formula One was cool. But beyond that, I've got no knowledge of this place other than it's tight, it's a short lap, it's a street circuit, and this is a crummy camera angle on the scenic roll. iRacing, fix this, please, and thank you. So we'll see if the 1495 that I just spent, that's a whale, uh, is going to be worth anything. Oh, you can actually see the beach in the background there. But the ocean that looks suspiciously gray. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, hey, we got a camera boom, and it's actually doing something. Gee. Okay, uh, fine. Cockpit. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the virtual mirror. And uh, that's about it. Uh, I have got fuel on board. I've got 14 and a half gallons. And, uh, huh. yeah, let's see what this is. Engine up. I am going to put our fuel map all the way down into the safety car map, which is map 8. And we're going to see how this goes. Obviously, the pit lane seems to be the extreme right side, so we'll take note of that. And we'll just pull away very gradually here and uh, see what we've got. Where does the pit lane terminate? Not for a while yet, it would seem. There are the green cones. And if my memory serves correctly, the first corner is a tight left-hander because Sebastian Bourdais got uh, beamed here by the stewards a few years ago for making a pass here in the pit exit. Yep, there we go. It's a left-hander, not that tight. Opens up into this. Okay, that's a chicane. This is extremely tight, but it opens up quickly. Okay. What do we have? Right, got curbing. More curbing. This is a straight of some sort. Right, that's a left-hander. You got traffic lights. Got a right-hander coming up, that I can tell. I don't know where the corner is. All right, braking boards. Looks like it's a right-hander. It is kind of gradual, and it opens up mid-corner, so that's decent. This is going to be quickish when we're up to speed. This is not, and we've already made a mistake. Right, that's a right-hander. That's a right-hander, and it's pretty tight. this start finish? It can't be. Or maybe it can be. I don't know. I have no idea where I am. This is start finish, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So that's start finish. So the last corner is pretty tight. The first corner is pretty tight. Coming into uh, 
little bit of a chicane thing into a tight right-hander. Okay, opens up to the left. Little squirt, maybe just get into second gear on the uh, fix one map. This does, this will probably be a second gear corner. Okay, All right, that's fine. Straight of some kind, longish, I think. There are the breaking boards. The so right hander opens up, yes, okay. This will be quickish. Long double apex left hander into this tight right. This is extremely tight. We'll have to start breaking a bit earlier there. And that's the whole lap. Okay. What's our first lap time here? It's something. That corner and got a slow down penalty. I got yelled at already. All right, Sebastian Bourdais gets uh, yelled at, so I get yelled at. Anyway, that lap time was what? 121.46? Okay. Yeah, it's going to be second gear easy once we're up to speed. That might be second gear as well, I'm not sure. Interesting stroboscopic effect under the bridges there. This opens up. This is quickish. Then it comes into this extremely tight right hander. Okay, and that's the lap. All right, so here we've got a bear left, actually. Got to watch the line. That red line is where we shall not cross. So that makes sense to me. All right, see, I was anticipating this corner a bit early. Right-hander. Curbs will be able to bounce all over those when we want. This will probably be second gear. Yeah, easy. Lots of space on the exit. This will probably be second gear as well. This one probably going to remain first gear because it tightens on the exit a little bit. Not too bad. Long straight into the right hander that opens on the exit. Understeer offline, tight right hander. All right, I'm feeling confident enough to give it full revs. What have we got here? Seven seconds faster. The times be coming down. Right. one will be second gear. Okay. This one will also be second gear. We'll try it. Yeah. First gear for here for the moment. Second gear, get on the power, keep it in second, keep it in, and then brake hard, turn in as early as you can without tagging that wall on the inside, and that's the lap. Okay. Try right, some push to pass, we'll probably get into the rev limiter in sixth. Have to lengthen sixth gear maybe a little bit. So braking pretty early. 
This opens up quick. Get on the power. A little squirt into second briefly. Okay. Second gear. Now this friend of the channel told me that uh, because I like Detroit, I'm very likely to like Long Beach. And uh, well, so far I am very intrigued by this place. It's very technical, but it's also a short lap. And I, I tend to like short and technical circuits. Uh, I like Hungary and Hockenheim for reasons like that. And this seems to be short and very technical. I mean, this start finish straight isn't really straight at all. And it's got some positive camber. That's pretty cool. A little wide of that apex. First gear around the fountain but you can get on the power early and launch out. That's good. I want to try second gear through there next time by. It's going to be a little difficult to spot my breaking point for that corner, I reckon. On the brakes, my first gear. You can take so much of that apex curb. Keep it in second, keep it in. Brakes, first gear, turn it in early. Just keep it out of that outside wall. Well, there's the runoff. Okay. So you can break later than we were, but uh, break earlier than that. Understood. Let's try second gear through here. Yep. Easy. Got to watch the bumps a little bit. Here through here, gotta remember. Here's where you want first, at least for now. Infield straight. So far, this is interesting. I am wanting to characterize this track as technical, but not terribly so. I mean, it's a street circuit, so you're kind of limited in terms of the variety of corners that you can have, but this is cool. Start finish with this positive camber there right on line. It's very interesting. It's uh, very cool to see a circuit like that. It's very unusual that you get a camber situation on a straight to begin with, but to have it there positively, it's it's interesting. It kind of wants to suck the car into the groove. That was understeer. I remember this next left hand or keep it in second. Second. Get on the power way earlier than that, I am sure. Here's where I want first. Okay. Lock up there. Got to work on sighting the braking zone for turn one. This I think I mostly have figured out.
right there, that right-hander, however you go over the apex curbs and you straddle the bumps there, it's going to determine your exit, so that's an important area to focus on. Break later for here for sure. But you got to watch the car's positioning for the mid-corner of that exit. Second gear, keep it in. Use the curbs. Brakes, first gear. That is almost full lock to the right. Keep it in a groove. And then watching pit out is going to be cool. Turn one, a little wide. Corner understeer, not particularly welcome. Yeah, locked up in the brake zone, had to save it. Yeah, I'm getting understeer here. I've, I've definitely killed the tires because I've been just bumbling around like a fool. But it's interesting, very interesting indeed. So far, would I compare it to Detroit? Uh, yes and no. I mean, obviously it's a street circuit. You got concrete walls on either side. You've got a lot of slow speed, tight corners. But I feel like you've got a more, more of a variety of corners than you've got at a place like Detroit. Just feels in general more open. Detroit's almost claustrophobic in sections. This is a lot more flowing. It's uh, faster for sure. The lap time already is a lot, uh, lot quicker than in Detroit. About five seconds a lap at least. That's a kiss of the wall. Yep, there's a spin. Let's see if the steering was knocked out a little bit by that. I feel like the rear camera might be off. No, we're still tracking straight. I will say it is bumpy though. Bit of a four wheel drift getting set up there. I want to pit anyway, because I want to change the tires. Where's the pit in? Is it right here? Yes, it is, okay. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. Uh, gotta figure out my, okay. Pit adjustments are there. We'll change tires. There's a pit crew. Okay, punch it. They added 18 and a half gallons of fuel as well, but whatever. Where is the actual turn in? Okay. So the 200 foot board, I guess it is, something we're gonna have to watch out for. Now we're full of gas, so we gotta keep that in mind. Full of gas and cold tires for the moment. Definitely want to be careful. Okay. 
Let's see what we could do. Yep, overcooked it a little bit. We kissed the wall there. I think... I think I found the breaking point. It's just a question of the tires aren't up and the car is heavier than I really want. And something feels loose on the rear now because we tagged the wall. Might have just tweaked the rear wing a touch. Let's see what we got. Come on. Don't throw it into the wall again. all over those entrance curbs. Here, you can go all over these curbs too at the uh, apex. And here we gotta tighten it up. The track's just moving all the time. It's, uh, you're never bored, I'll tell you that much. They say you got the core. Really? That is annoying. I will say the uh, tire physics update though for the IR18 definitely helping. Oh yeah, we really got the wall that time. I can just plainly see now that the rear wing is messed up. But before we tag the wall, you can get the tail out and, uh, you know, you don't immediately spin. That's good. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. You've got wheel damage. Yeah, I think so. I, I think we might have wheel damage there. Your car is too much damage. We've got to fix it. Yeah, rear end uh, was already knackered, and I was pressing my luck. Oh, well. How bad was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I will say uh, it's a great opportunity to see what uh, the damage model has done. That's just really cool looking, I got to say. Yeah, you can see plainly the rear wing is not straight anymore, and yep, yeah, boom. Knock the left front right off. Front wing is gone, nose cone damaged, and yep, you got uh, half of the braking force now. Yeah. But I've got to say, uh, that's really, really cool. I am uh, definitely, a, I guess I'm a Long Beach fan in the making because so far, our best lap time is a 109.167. We did on lap 14. Our first lap was a 121. Okay, so times are going to start to converge in the uh, low 109s, uh, high 108s for the moment, I would say. What I need to do is look up what the pole position time for the... Uh, 
most recent Grand Prix of Long Beach has been. Let's see. Didn't happen in 2020. 2019 pole position time for the Grand Prix of Long Beach was... 106.4811, set by Alexander Rossi, and IndyCar's timing goes to the 10,000th place, which is something that I think every racing series ought to adopt. But, uh, okay, this is a setup that I made for Hungary, so it's a bit of a longer circuit, a uh, little bit slower in terms of the, the rate at which the corners come at you, but all around faster in terms of average speed. Uh, what would I do if I were to try and attack this? Can't do anything with the wheelbase. I don't know. Let's just take fuel out because the car feels okay. As, as much of a judgment as I can make of this without really knowing the circuit all that well, having just 14 laps to my resume for the moment. Um, yeah. Let's let's just try it. Do I feel like anything needs to be softened up? Uh, let's just go full soft front and rear any roll bar, see what it does. And we gotta. Pay attention to tire temps. Coming out of the gate, obviously the tires are cold. The brakes have got to come up. And if you just go straight at it right away, you're going to just kill the tires, so that's no fun. Keep it in a little bit on the exit. Got ever so slightly airborne there for a moment. Steering got real light for a second. All right. Let's turn it loose. I really got to focus on turn one. Still feeling a bit lost in the brake zone. Five, four, three brakes. A little bit of rear locking. Mid quarter oversteer, which turned into understeer. Here, apex curves, get on the throttle, car is bouncing. Second gear, get on the throttle, unwind the steering a bit. First gear, All right. There's more time to be had through that corner for sure. Second gear. Car bounces into the air. Understeer, tires still aren't 100% ready. Man, it's so easy to overcook that final corner. You got that corner and got it. Really? Where exactly is the cut? That's the question. I know it's over the pit line, but uh, where over the pit line? How far away can you get away with it? <laughs> okay. Well, we yielded that time. <laughs> Man, it is so easy to lose it.
It is incredibly easy to lose it through most of these corners, particularly through the first and second parts of the lap. All right, there was the cut again. I was about halfway across. So in other words, don't go halfway across. It's difficult to avoid, at least for where I am right now with the uh, state of my track knowledge, because I'm looking for the brake boards. And where your eyes go, your hands tend to follow. So you're going to have to make a real effort there to uh, avoid letting my eyes dictate the direction of travel there. Yeah, we got to get out of it. Otherwise, they're going to black flag me and we'll be thrown out of my own test session. Everywhere else, though, we're not falling afoul of track limits. I will say track limits are dumb, especially there. I mean, you're not doing any harm by going over that line. Yes, it's dangerous if somebody is coming out of the pits, but I would tell the circuit organizers, move the pit wall. You really want to keep the guys out of there, move the wall. And now because I'm focusing on not cutting the corner, I miss the corner. <laughs> That's going to be the hardest part of this whole lap, turn one. Breaks, turn it in. Oops. Big bump there, made me hit the pit lane speed limiter. Because your arms are crossed there, and uh, my knuckles sort of punch the pit lane speed limiter there as it's over to what is now the left side of the wheel. I have the pit lane limiter on the top right. steer right don't don't hit the limiter again good You have really got to focus, though, <laughs> through that first part of the lap. This is basically your first chance to breathe if you can survive that far. But you can't breathe too much because you got this blind 90 degree corner with a very fast exit if you get it right. I know we hit something. Did we tack the wall there? Because I legitimately didn't feel it, I heard it. Right, we're about a third of a second up on our session best. I'll take that. 108.79, okay. Yep, 
Keep it in second. Here, throw it in. Tail end gets real happy. Right. That was a bit of a mess. I don't know how that worked, but it did. Roger, two laps. Half a second down. Three quarters of a second down. There's the wall. Front wing's all messed up now. Yep, definitely hurting me on the left left hand corners because uh, you know downforce is missing. That's a little under two seconds off. Well, at least I know that. Uh, I can get the car around, but not reliably yet. Wing damage gonna hurt us here. Worst case, if you have to bail out, there is a little bit of space there to do so. Huh. Okay. Okay, okay. This is, uh, it's quite interesting. Optional repairs. Uh, ah, they do actually change the wing. How about that? Very, very cool. Okay, go. Interesting. Very interesting. I am not entirely sure how I feel about this place yet, other than to say it's intriguing and I can totally see its potential of being one of my favorite tracks. It's just going to take a lot of time to understand the intricacies here. I've only done 24 laps, best one being a 108.799. So, eh. We are... Pole position was in the 106s. Yeah, 106.4811 was 2019 pole position. So, you know, we're two seconds and a bit off of a really quick lap here. We're not even on a, a quick race lap. Lap 27 of the 2019 race, 107.6943, set by Ryan hunter Ray. Uh, yeah, we've got some work to do. We've really got some work to do if we're going to be going anywhere with this track.
but I am very, very, very highly encouraged so far by what I'm seeing. It's uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's who would have thought that this sim racing business could be difficult? Because it's certainly difficult. At least uh, right now, I'm trying to learn a new track on uh, on the back of a long day at uh, my real life job, and yeah wasn't a very good day to begin with. So, uh, yeah, I have work to do. But it's going to be interesting. It's going to be rewarding, I think. The car is still pretty tight in some regards. Um, it's compliant, which is good. I feel like it's bouncing a little bit too much. Maybe, I mean, it's already running pretty soft. I feel like it might even be able to run softer, though. But other than that, it's uh, it's something that uh, is going to require a lot of investment, time-wise and uh, brain-wise, in terms of trying to figure out how to set this thing up. But so far, I'm encouraged. So far, I am very, very much encouraged and very much intrigued by this layout. It's a short lap, but they cram a lot into this short lap. And uh, ultimately, to close this out here, uh, we're going to give you a view of this really short lap. A couple of hot laps here from the track side as well as the onboard cameras to give you a better sense of the lay of the land here and to see if I can get any more speed out of this thing just as it sits right now. 108.799 a beat. We'll see if I can do it. But, yeah, that is my track learning here, at least my first 24 attempts here around Long Beach. Uh, it's about time that I got to grips with this place. And now that iRacing has finally got it, it's about time that iRacing has got it. I think it had been a tech track for something like 10 years, but uh, they've got it to us now. It's finally ready for the world, and perhaps I am just about ready for it. So to be continued for sure, but until then, hot laps are to follow here from Long Beach with the IR18. So stay tuned and see if I manage to improve any in the five minutes between now and then. Until next time, I do thank you all very much for watching. Ferrari Man 601 saying thank you very much, and of course, we will see you soon.